bespoke clothing is a it is so sought after right now because it's cut absolutely perfectly for you. It's your second skin. It's your Spider-Man costume. Welcome to Profoundly Pointless. My name is Nick. Our guest this episode is the most famous tailor in the world. We're going to talk about what makes a great suit, the latest style trends, and why custom clothing has suddenly skyrocketed in popularity. This is Bespoke Tailor, Roshan Milwani. Thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe if you get a chance. When we talk about creating clothing, is it hard to create a suit or is it hard to do it well? So what is hard is crossing the road. You could get run over by a car, okay? Nothing else in life is hard. If you look at anything as hard, you might as well just, you know, go into your room and lock yourself up. But is it... Is it difficult to make it by hand or to do it in a custom way? So, you know, I mean, it's my team. It's more difficult for them to communicate in English than it is to make a suit. Okay. So, no, they're experts. I mean, they have decades and decades and decades worth of experience. So I have a whole bunch of guys, a whole bunch of guys. We're talking about dozens who worked with my family for over 50 years. They have been a tailor longer than both you and I have been alive. Is that common in the industry where you find people that have just done this forever? It is extremely common when you talk about just the industry itself. But you have to remember that the industry is very small. So there's not millions of them. Okay. There's scores of them. There's not even hundreds of them any, anymore. Okay. It turned into scores this decade. Is that just because people aren't paying for this anymore? Or because kind of mass produced, for lack of a better phrase, clothing is just more bodily fitting than it used to be? Completely neither. Nobody wants to grow up to be a tailor. Okay. That's all it is. And even if they look at all the people that follow me on Instagram and, and TikTok, all these young kids, they're dying to be me. Just dying. Okay. The adulation I get is just, wow, it's so flattering. It's so humbling. But they're not willing to get to that stage. I've been on the job 24 years straight, okay? But moreover, I grew up in this business. I've been coming to my shop since I was under 10, all right? Like I said, the guys who have worked for me, there's so many of them who have done it for over 50 years, then 40 years, then 30 years, then 20 years. Not everyone is willing to work up to that stage. That's the thing. But how long does it take to get really good at it? Decades. Why? Why is that? Why does it take so long? Because it's a hard job. It's done by hand. And people don't grow up anymore to do things by hand. So then they get to an age where they're 16, 15, 17, 18. They're like, wow, this is sexy. We want to do this. But they don't have labor and, ha and handwork in their f physicality or their mindset. You give them a needle and a thread. They don't know what the hell to do with it. And then it's hard. It's hard. Now, it doesn't matter if you're an 18-year-old growing up in medieval times and you're asked to become a tailor because since birth, all you've been doing is stuff with your hands. But if you're 18 years old now and you want to become a bespoke tailor and suddenly you have to do stuff with your hands, but since birth, all you've done is play with your iPad, it's very difficult. So it's not hard for me to do what I do, but it's very hard for people to break into this industry. And it's got nothing to do with off-the-rack clothing fitting better, far from it. It's garbage, off-the-rack clothing, costing less, no chance. My price competitive advantage is second to none based on what I have to offer. Dollar for dollar, pound for pound, I'm the best on the planet. And it's nothing to do with anything, all right? Bespoke, or that there's no demand for bespoke clothing. Bespoke clothing is, a, it is so sought after right now than it has ever been at any stage. What what's what do you think then is fueling that demand? Why is it suddenly all why is it suddenly so high? You understand how hot guys look in bespoke clothes? I People mean, do look good. On, you put a suit on, you walk to the door, every woman's like, Oh my god, I love a man in a suit. I love a man in a suit has 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 been the line, one of the lines for half a century or more. You know what I mean? Mad Men. Mad Men gets on TV. Everybody loves Mad Men. Everybody loves the suits. Suits. Suits comes on TV. I can't watch trash like that. Everybody loves suits. Everybody 
wants to wear a suit, see a guy in a suit. Bonnie Stinson, suit up. This small, this group of a-holes who don't want to wear suits. We can be the suit wearers. You've got 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds dying to wear suit. Oh, my God. You know, they love getting dressed up. And they love me, right? Because I bring so much fun to this. And it's not boring stuff. For Okay, so I, I kind of get the idea of why a custom-made or a tailored or a bespoke suit or bespoke clothing would look better. But what is it about it kind of specifically? Like, okay, why does it look better on somebody than off-the-rack clothing? What about it? So first of all, it looks better on anybody than off-the-rack clothing because it's cut absolutely perfectly for you. It's your second skin. It's your Spider-Man costume. Nothing is cut homogeneously, okay? Both shoulders are cut different. Both arm uh, lengths are cut different. Both arm holes are cut different. Both pecs are cut different. Both love handles are cut different. Both quads, both hammies, both buttocks, both calves are cut different. It's cut perfect for you. How hot does Aquaman, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man look in their costume? That's what a bespoke suit is. It's your costume. You know what I mean? You look so good. You look like the gladiator. And I've perfected that. I've taken that to another extreme. I started off doing skin fit because I love skin fit, Spider-Man stuff. But not every guy could rock a skin fit, okay? Not every guy was comfortable rocking a skin fit. So I was a short face and everyone wanted the Roshan Nawani skin fit suit. So we then developed a 4D fit where everywhere just followed the contours of your body and nearly stuck to you. So you were just basically gift wrapped in my 4D fit. And, and guys are loving it. But does that work if somebody maybe doesn't have, let's say, the best, the best body in the world? This is about everyone's body. This is not about the best body. No chance. Off the rack is potentially about the best body. My suits are about a client's mind, about the client's vision. I am the suit whisperer. I don't talk to the suit. I talk to the client. I get inside the client's head and I bring their vision to life. They may not all want slim fit. They may want a fuller fit, a classic fit, a throwback fit, whatever fit, but they will be gift wrapped and nobody does it like me. And it is just pristine what we create. And you don't have to take my word for it. There's 9,000 videos of guys on my Instagram. All right. Just beaming. Girls as well. Excuse me. Beaming in the suits that I've made it. And it fits them perfectly. They get to pick the fabric, design the suit. We have a buffet of style attributes for them to pick from. They get to pick the interior, the buttons, the works, and the bonuses. It fits them perfectly. Better than anything they can buy off the rack. And cheaper than anything they can buy off the rack. I mean, I'm in a renaissance right now of my own creation. I love that line, man. <laughs> That's how I like it. Um, so fun of, for the process, right? Like, obviously, this is a big process. But mm -hmm. kind of walk me through, okay, I'm going to get a suit made. What happens? Like, what do you do? How does it get made? How does this all kind of come together? It is a big process. It is a big vestment of time and effort and sometimes heartache. But we manage that heartache. Now, there's two ways to it. One, you either meet me in Hong Kong. Or two, we never meet. And I work with people who either come and meet me in Hong Kong or who I've never met. Let's start with the Hong Kong part. You come into my store, into my atelier. I measure you, all right? We pick the fabrics. We pick the styles, the buttons. We, pick the, we, we, we create the essence of the suit, the foundation of it. What is the suit for? Are you 21 going to interview for KPMG? Or is this for your 25th wedding anniversary and you're having a ball celebration of the Ritz-Carlton? Whatever it may be, it may be graduation, it may, may be your bar mitzvah, it can be anything. You could need a divorce suit, all right? Whatever you want. We talk about how you want it to make you feel, how you want to feel inside of it, and then you go away. And then if you come in the morning, I could see you as early in the afternoon, or I'd probably see you the following afternoon. What I've done in between is I've explained to each and every member of my team what exactly we're going to create. And they go and do their bit. And part of their bit is to draw a paper cutting of the client's body based on the measurements that we've just took. All right? A complete paper cutting. And then put cloth on that cutting and carve out that cloth. So literally cut and carve out the body parts. And then sew together a based fitting where it's the shell of the suit without the inner canvasing. You come in 
and then you try on that shell. We pin stitch chalk around you, talk to you about you know the length, the fit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Make you walk, make you squat, make you sit. You then go away, and then we finish the suit with the inner canvassing and lining, then the button holes and the buttons. You come back the next day and try it on, it's perfect. If it's not perfect, give us a few hours, we'll make it perfect. <clears throat> so that's one facet of it. The second facet is I never meet you. You send me your measurements through the measurement chart on my website, and then I make you something amazing. We hop on a video call, and I talk. I, I figure out who you are, what you are. Same thing I would do where you, where, whether you're in the store or not. I either send you links to fabrics for you to peruse, okay? Or you choose something off my Insta, or we do a live call, and you go through the fabrics, just like you would be in the store. I'll be showing you fabrics, all right? I have tons and tons of fabric books, okay? Tons and tons and tons of fabric books that you can look at of all different shapes and sizes. You can send me a photo of a, of, a, of a style that you like and we can take the best from it. I can sketch something for you. I can do anything you want for you. Very, very, very simple. I could spend hours talking about what I could do for you. I asked you a couple of questions. I say, we'll get off the phone. You go and find the best fitting suit in your wardrobe. You tell me the size and the brand of it. Put it on. Get your partner to shoot a video of you. Let me see how you look in a suit and how, what makes you feel good and what you don't like. Okay, and then send me a couple of photos. I don't need your face. I want you standing shirtless. If you're a woman, then with a t-shirt, I mean with a tank top. I want to see your neck down to your hips from the front, both sides and the back. So I can see your shoulder structure. Then I build you the suit. And I wouldn't be in business if it wasn't nearly perfect all the time. It's not an investment because it's cheap. 650 bucks US is nothing. What will you pay in California, in New York, in Florida? in Italy, in London, in Japan, in Paris. Oh my goodness. You pay many times more and you still won't get the attributes that I offer. The vestment is the time. If you're in Hong Kong, I need to see you a few times. The vestment is the time. If you're abroad, you need to do your homework for me. For someone who's doing what you're, what you're doing, your caliber of work, you said, I think, 650 for a suit American. If this was in New York or Paris... What would what would your kind of services like in New York or Paris cost somebody? Specifically, what I do, 10 times more at least. It's like 6,500. Whoa. Who? Without a doubt. I'm not, just, I'm not making this stuff up. How long would it take you to... Now, how long does it generally take to make a suit? Would Look, I can you? make a suit in a day if you're Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay? Because you'll pay the OT and I'm going to put you to the front because it's a once in a lifetime thing to work with Cristiano Ronaldo or Tom Brady. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'd yeah. be a fool not to do that. Okay. I once made seven suits for Russell Crowe and seven shirts in 24 hours. Okay. But I can't do that for everybody, nor can anyone pay to take my whole team for one day. Okay. I need at least a few days, ideally, but at least a few weeks, which is better. All right. If I'm rushing, you may get the great skill work but you won't get my creativity. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm managing so many projects all the time. I'm managing so many individuals, right? Think about the amount of clients that I have. But, you know, I would say if you're in Hong Kong, we could knock it out in a few days, no problem. I thought it would be longer than that. I really thought you were going to tell me like a month or two. It, it, can, it depends on the client, right? It depends on the client's physicality, all right? It depends on the client's... Uh, I don't know. Fussiness is not a nice word, right? Uh, I know what you mean. Like they're um, uh, right? particular. Yeah. Yes. So, so it all depends. It all depends on our workload that day, whether it's a holiday weekend. Uh, you know what I mean? Is it during Chinese New Year? Is it Christmas weekend? Is it Easter weekend? Is it some big Chinese festival? Is it Indian New Year? It's very relative. Okay. But it's safe to say that if you're in Hong Kong for a week and you see us on your first day, you'll be leaving with an immaculate suit. The best suit you ever had by the end of the week. Okay. <laughs> and if you have a big event coming up, um, say it's your graduation or your wedding, you want to give, and we're not going to meet, right? Then you need to give me a couple of months because we've got to allow for the time that, you know, it does get to you and say there are tweaks that you want. I got to pick it up and I got to send it back to you. Now, most of the delay doesn't come from me. Most of the delay comes if you're in Hong Kong, can you meet me tomorrow at four? No, I have a tour. No, I have a meeting. Okay. Most of the delay doesn't come from me. Can you get me those photos that I need? Yeah, I'll get it for you. 
bro, I'm waiting on the photos. I'm waiting on the video. Yeah, I'll get my girlfriend to shoot it this weekend. Do you understand what I'm saying? Most of the delay doesn't come from us. Now, when you make it, like, are people mainly using sewing machines? Are they doing this by hand? All by hand. The only thing done by machine is the button holes. The only thing done by machine is the button holes. <clears throat> we can make them by hand. It takes way too much time. Okay, think about how many buttonholes on jacket, how many jackets we make, okay? Yeah. So anything done by machine is buttonholes. Now, we can make it by hand if the client requests, but they got to pay the OT for that. Virtually everything comes in one class, the Roshan Nawani Couture class, okay? I don't even wear handmade buttonholes. But if you really want handmade buttonholes and you're willing to pay a little bit extra and willing to wait a little bit longer, then we'll do it for you. But there's so many attributes that we offer that this, a Milanese buttonhole, a handmade buttonhole is for like a boring suit for a guy who has tons of cash and wears the most boring suits. And the only thing he can show off is his handmade buttonhole. I'm not knocking it. I'm putting it into perspective for you. Are you ready for some harder slash listener submitted questions? Listen, you can take me apart. So best colors of suits. So <clears throat> if you don't own a suit, you want to buy a black suit. You can wear it to everything. Then you ne the next one you do is a blue. And the next one you do is a gray, a dark gray. Okay. Then you add a slightly lighter blue. Then you add a slightly lighter gray. Then you add a blue pattern. So check. Then you add a gray pattern, so a check. Then you add a gray stripe. Then you add a, uh, excuse me, a blue stripe and a gray stripe. Then you do a beige suit, okay? And then you've got your foundation. So then you add dark green. And then after that, it doesn't matter what you do. What, would you, what are the kind of the most popular colors right now? Right now, green, dark green. Dark green is so hot. Every other guy wants a dark green suit. And I predicted this. Troll back in all my live streams. Two years ago, I said, the start of 2022, I said, green is the hottest color. Now everybody's buying green. What do you think is going to be after that then? We're going to go big on beige. What do you think makes, like, what would, how would you define, like, style? Confidence. And that's basically it. Yeah. That's, you only need one word answer right there, don't you? Just confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who's maybe not confident, how do they become? Then you come to me, okay? Because I fill you with courage. I teach you how to be brave, or at least pretend to. That is my forte. I teach my clients everything, and bravery is one of them. I tell the women, the very few women that are, that are very close to me in my life, that I can actually open up to. So the one thing I can teach my kids is, is bravery, is courage, is confidence. I can teach that to my clients, and I do every single day. That's why they love working with me. Hardest piece of clothing of the suit to make? The shoulders, right? Everybody's shoulders are so different. The shoulders are the foundation of the suit. It starts up here and it hangs from it. So it's all about the shoulders, bro. It's all about the shoulders. Everybody's shoulders are messed up. They're not straight. They're bumpy. One hangs lower, one hangs higher, one hangs forward, one hangs back. One is wider, one is narrow. The shoulders. You have to nail the shoulders. You nail the shoulders, everything falls from it. You can nail everything else. If the shoulders are shitty, nothing will fall right. Hardest part of the body to kind of hide. You cannot hide anything. That is, that is nonsense. So every woman that comes in here and that's worried about their weight, okay? They said, I want this a bit fuller. I've said this to every woman in my life and every woman client. I'm saying, darling, you cannot hide anything, okay? Nothing can be hidden. So the best thing is to show it off. I tell women, you can't hide anything. But if you let me show it off, Everyone who's looking at you will think you're sexy. And that's what I do. What did you say would be the best fabric? Like, what's your favorite fabric to work with? Lightweight wool. Is that what, what are most suits made out of? Like, if I was to buy something off most of high-end suits, Most high-end suits are made from lightweight wool. Lightweight wool? That's probably the most common thing. Why, why, why that? What's so, why? It's so fine. It's woven so well. It doesn't wrinkle. It's like skin. So it's easy to create it into a second skin. Where do people generally get it wrong? Like when they buy a suit, where is it, where do they, is it the pattern, the color, the fit? Like, and, and if it's the fit, like where do they mess it up in the fit? It's two things, okay? One is the fit. They don't know how they're supposed to dress. They have all these weird rules, okay, that people follow. Two, it's not paying for high-end attributes, okay? Plastic buttons, unfunctional pockets, shitty padding inside the shoulders you, you, know, you know what i'm saying like like you've got to understand something if you're not going to come to me 
you don't have to spend big bucks. But then at least go to Hugo Boss, go to Suit Supply, go to Ted Baker, go to Paul Smith. All right. These are major brands, mass production, a lot of thought and design, great quality control, great value in their brand. They hold great value in their own brand. About the same price point as me, a little bit higher, but off the rack. Style that you wish would go away, style that you wish would come back. Slim fit is here to stay. Baggy clothing is just for lazy people. You heard me say it. All right. We as a as humanity in general should vote against baggy clothing. What is there a style though, a current kind of trend with clothing that you're like, oh, I wish that would go away? <laughs> it's a very narrow question that has no answer whatsoever. The world is so gigantic. You have men, women, elderly people, children. You have continents, countries, culture, religion. There is so much fashion out there. There's no such thing as a trend. Okay? There's so much fashion out there. There's no such thing as a trend. All right? I don't have any pet peeve about anything right now at all. I think the world is so currently educated. Is a, it is immense. It is immense how smart people are. And we can thank our phones and we can thank influencers like myself for educating people free of charge. I have no pet peeves about fashion at all. I think everyone's working hard to dress well. What I'm telling you is that if you want others to value you, then you need to value yourself. How can I tell a good tailor from a really good tailor? It's all about trust, okay? Your tailor, no matter what, will make you happy. If he's not making you happy, he's not your tailor. I may be better than your current tailor. So what? If you're not comfortable working with me, then what's the point? Every tailor is at a different point in the curve. Some are much more patient. Some are like dictators and prima donnas. Some, unfortunately, are just yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay? It's all about trust. It's all about feeling. If you like the guy the most, then he's your guy. What what generally kind of separates somebody's work, though? Would you say it's the style that they do it with, or is it the actual kind of technical ability, so to speak? I, I, I would focus less on the technical ability because you've got guys in Italy, New York, Paris, who are just so good, who are so good, and they charge those astronomical prices that I cannot afford and you cannot afford, all right? So we've got to rule them out of the equation, okay? Yeah. Because they're not for the masses. I am, okay? I am. And, and you know, my stuff just, it just hugs and fits so perfectly. It, it, it's just a sea, a symphony of, 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 of beauty. And if you if you if you see a symphony if if you see a suit you walk into tailor shop. First of all, the guy should have thirty or forty suits waiting for thirty or forty clients. If he doesn't, you're in the wrong place. Okay. Secondly, grab these suits if they if they they feel like the ocean. Okay, then he's your guy. You know you know what I'm saying? If they look like they're from JOS Banks or Uniqlo or H and M or Zara, then get out of there. Right? It's all visual. It's very it's very easy to tell if the suit feels like plastic. If it feels like ugh, yucky, right? Get out of there. If it feels like butter that you want to sleep in, it, right? <laughs> He's your guy. Yeah, you know, you know I mean, it's all human feeling, right? You use your senses, touch and sight, right? And then you'll know the answer will, will, will be there. It's multifold. There's no one thing, right? I, I can tell you some don'ts. A tailor shouldn't advertise. He doesn't need to, okay? He, he doesn't need to put a big billboard up somewhere or something in a magazine, all right? He should be sought after. A tailor shouldn't depend on stock photography. All right. Get some marketing company to come in and, and do some beautiful photo shoot and stuff. The raw garments should speak to them for themselves. Quick and dirty photos are the best thing. If he doesn't believe in his quick and dirty photos and video, right? And he needs some guy to come in, some team to come in and dress up his place. Then obviously he's not confident in what he has. He yeah. shouldn't have someone, he shouldn't have someone on the street. Trying to bring you into his store, you know what I mean? You shouldn't have some guy busking or whatever. It's not busking; it's touting, right? There's there's many full parts. There's many full parts. Can we do this real quick, just for kind of example's sake? Yeah. This is off the rack. Sure. Express. 
looking yeah. at it, if I, I'll step back, like where would this not really fit me? Okay, it doesn't fit you, but I'm not being a dick. Now stay there, okay? Just stay there. The shoulders are very decent. Very, 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 very decent, okay? I'm happy with the shoulders. Both the way they fall down to the ends and the way the collar sticks to your neck. Very nice. The breast pocket looks like shit. It looks like it comes from manufactured press. The breast pocket, other side, doesn't even look like it's real. Is it? No. See, I no, can tell that no, straight. Stand back real. up, Samuel, don't go. Stand back up, right? So straight away, that's it. I, if I can see it off a screen from 8,000 miles away, right? You're like, ugh, already, right? And then yeah. from, the, from below, it starts to hang like shit. Look at the waist. It just crinkles like, like, like a piece of shit, right? So he's got the top right, okay? Which is the hardest part, okay? So they, they understand the challenge, and they've, they've, they've met the challenge. And then this is how they cut corners. And this is the problem with off the rack. Because it's so much cutting corners. Because as you come down, it just doesn't fit you. Now look at me. Oh, yours fits way better. Mine yeah. is just immaculate. Okay? Yeah. Everything about it is a skin. You can see the 4D fit. It just stuck to me. It is stuck to me everywhere. You can see the high armhole. You can see the roping on the shoulders, right? It's just clean, clean, clean. It flows. It's skin, mine. Right? You can see the bucket of breast pocket and stuff, right? Like it is very 4D. It moves with my body. Okay. So I'll tell you the truth all the time. It's a great starter suit what you're wearing. If you're 21 years old, okay, and you're going to go interview for Deloitte. Yeah, that's what I. That's a no no. That's what I noticed like between your suit and kind of this is that as you move, the suit seems to move with you as opposed to what I was. My suit moves with me. Yours stays like a rock. Right. It doesn't. It's. Because it doesn't go in those certain areas, right? Exactly. It's not cut for you. It's cut for a homogenous size. Mine is yeah. cut for me. So have you been surprised? Like what, I guess, the social media success that you have, has that, was that surprising to you that so many people were interested in this? Or did you kind of like think that, no, if I could, if I could just expose this business, so to speak, that people would be interested in it? So I've always been successful and I've inherited success, okay? But what I've been quick to do is connect with different genres of people, different cultures, and different generations. Social media is just an evolution of humanity, okay? All right? It is not the key to my success in any ways. It is just a free window to the world. Um, social media has just, it's just evolution, right? And, 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 and it's scary for people. Because they're not honest. Okay? They need photographers and media teams to paint a picture of them. And I don't. I don't believe in that. To me, that's dishonest. So, so I've had success long before social media. All right? I've worked with every type of A-list celebrity there is. I've worked with three American presidents personally. You know how huge it is for me to have done that? I worked with President Clinton half a dozen times, President Bush Sr. twice, President Bush once, okay? I work with Sir Desmond Tutu. <laughs> I work with ridiculous people, bro. I work with Russell Crowe. I work with Terry Bradshaw. He was Brady before there was Tom Brady. Do you understand? He's a four-time Super Bowl winning. Yeah, I always liked him. Four-time Super Bowl MVP. Before there was Brady, there was Terry Bradshaw, and I've worked with them, okay? So I've had, I, I inherited success, and I built on that. And I haven't used, social media hasn't given me more success. No, social media has given me the free tools uh, which serve as a window for the rest of the world to see what I do day in, day out. It's my own free reality TV. 